My name's Martin Lines. I farm in South Cambridgeshire near St Nets. Uh, predominantly our wool farm. We're farming just over 1,400 acres. We're mainly doing uh, combined wool cropping. So we do winter wheat, winter barley, oilseed rape and winter beans and also some spring barley. So we, we started off about 10 years ago we were on a plough based system. Uh, when I was setting up an uh, operator ploughing, running alongside the plough, I really noticed the previous footprints of the tyres in the bottom of the furrow and it really woke me up to what we're doing to our soils. Our machine was getting bigger and heavier and we we're causing more and more compaction and getting more water standing about. So we try to operate and work with our soils now and understand actually doing less is better and as a farmer my soil is my asset and that's where I get my production from. So we moved on to a Coombe Performer. Uh, we managed to uh, have a trial with one of those and it's the only machine I found that moved all the soil we wanted to at the depth we wanted to. So I had one machine that I can do 5 centimetres down to 35 centimetres. So I could target my fields for the compaction they had or the soil health problems they had. Which actually started saving me money because I was spending less money moving less soil and actually seeing better healthier soil and better healthier crop. And by growing my cover crops over the next few years I can actually uh, benefit the soil and actually produce and grow my own uh, phosphate, potash, harvest the sunlight. As a farmer our biggest asset with what we do is harvest sunlight and turn it into crops. So then we had the opportunity of trying this, this coon drill uh, and that just revolutionised my concept of what we could achieve and how much we could do. So the idea of, of the crimp roller on the front, that allowed me to grow really big cover crops and actually manage them. We'd grown cover crops in previous years and they become unmanageable. What do we do with them? Do we top them? Do we plough them? Do we cultivate them in? Do we burn them off really early? And I wanted to have a growing crop growing all year round in the soil and keep the soil and the bacteria really working for me and not have that stale seedbed place. So actually all the good bacteria leave my soil. So the idea is to drill green and over the next few years we'll establish which cover crops work for us and our different times of growing and I want to grow them as big as I can and with the uh, crimp roller, actually lay them down and actually cause, create soil armour, some, some would call it, and call a mat. So that suppresses any future weeds that are going to come through. So we have a crimp roller, it's not designed to chop it up, it's just to crease it and bend it down. And I'm hoping in a few years time when we understand our cover crops and uh, we've reduced and, and eradicated black grass, I won't need to terminate the cover crop with glyphosate. We had an opening disc so I can change the depth of what I, I, I drill and how much soil I move and how much material. We spec'd up on a full set width of tyres because I wanted to lay all that material down. On a farm that's on a really clay based soil, I didn't want to have that extra compaction on the headland by just an axle with a tra tractor axle squashing the headlands down. And we're really starting to see benefit of targeting our reduced compactions on reducing our compaction and moving the soil just on headlands and sorting that out. I can do three different seed mixes. So I could, on the headlands and on our compacted zones, put in a different cover crop mix and actually target, so we have some tillage radish and that, and actually target those areas rather than do it across the whole field. And with this drill, we have the opportunity of doing different rows so I can switch off different cultures. So I can do it into crop growing and have different things growing so we could wider rows for our beans and our oilseed rope, rape and put pollinator and that extra features in there in between the rows and add more diversity to, to our soils and our landscape. Um, we also found that the predatory species we have in our margins and in these pollen and nectar margins in my wild bird seed mixes and grass margins come to eat my aphids and certainly going on to this uh, direct drilling, very low disturbance we're having more insect life in the fields so that actually the predators are building up and they're actually managing my, most of my press problems so that allows me to reduce my costs of operation and costs of input. This drill has allowed me to still do cultivations where I need to and we can drill straight into that really low disturbance or we can go where we have really healthy soils now straight into cover crops and deliver that kind of operation. We've been drilling through stuff up to a metre tall and it's coped with it and it looks awful as a conventional minded farmer and we've got to go lose this mindset and actually what's best is it best the bit of yield we get at the end of the day or the field looks lovely in the time we drill and for me it's about the price it costs me to get that yield at the end of the day the drill is a great you know it's a really large investment but i've actually taken away a, a huge amount of other machinery we've reduced our horsepower down by half we've got rid of a range of other machinery um, because i can have one piece of kit uh, this, this drill to do all my drilling and establishment but I still have kept my coon performer so when we have compaction problems or we've
taking our harvest in on a really wet year and we've made a bit of a mess, as we will do, um, I'm not going to leave my crop in the field and sacrifice that. I want that crop in the shed, that's where my profit will be. I can come back in with the cultivator and just rectify those areas that need attention. And on this farm here, we're actually on, on an RSPB farm and we deliver the habitats and we deliver the farming operation. And it's this giant up approach and working with other organisations to understand the wildlife we have, it's the same as I work with organisations that tell me about my cropping, my nutrition, my inputs. And it's about combining the two, getting the best uh, advice and experience I can get from all of the support that's out there but don't just listen to one individual support Let, understand that there's a lot out there that can really help our businesses and don't be afraid to try something different now over the next few years we can understand how we can be flexible in our approach to our operations by using a machine and our previous drilling, drilling machine was a drill and that's what we operated with and that did that so that was one cost by having a machine that I can be really flexible with I can cut out other operations, I can add things in, so actually our cost is just reducing all the time. And I, you know, the last two years we've been operating and having the opportunity to work with this and now purchase one, it's just opening my mindset of what we can achieve as a farmer and actually how we farm in a better way and actually farm with nature. As a, the UK chair of the Nature Friendly Farming Network, talking to other like-minded farmers really has given us the opportunity to uh, share best practice and understand that actually the best way we can farm is actually farming with our environment around us. In different places we can deliver different things. In some places it would be crops and in other places we can deliver nature and flood mitigation and carbon capture. All the things the public wants us to achieve. They want our food and they want high standard, high quality food but they also want an improving environment and we can actually do that. So I have a flexibility for the future, for the next 10 years, of one machine that gives me the flexibility in whatever's going to be chucked at us, I'm confident now that I can meet the challenges and actually deliver uh, the products society wants, whether that's the carbon capture in my cover crops, the environmental issue uh, protection, uh, well, health, really healthy soils and healthy crops, and we can deliver that now for the future.